I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings. In the Dude, that's pretty oh, cool. Man, that is a, I miss that, that is clown. Sad clown. clown. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty good. This is the gloom, bringing you weekly interviews with F3 Omaha packs, exploring their F3 experiences and finding those sticky elements that create the glue in the gloom. Shout out to our sponsors, Major Team Mortgage, Omaha Laser Dentistry, Exclusively Eye Care, Liberty Core Real Estate, Avier Wealth Management, and Apex Men's Clinic. We appreciate their support. What's it like to love your dentist? Well, you're about to find out where healthy smiles go beyond your teeth. No drilling, no needles, and no anxiety. Relax, it's Omaha Laser Dentistry. Welcome to better. At Omaha Laser Dentistry, Dr. Bullamparty uses the Solea Laser, a CO2 laser that's used in all of his day-to-day patient care. He provides thorough exams, assessments, and treatments for things like snoring, tethered tissue, and extractions like wisdom teeth, as well as other surgeries. Check them out today at omahalaserdentistry.com. Discounts may be available for F3 Omaha members. Now let's get back to the gloom. That's flying around. And we're back. Uh, excited for this guy, man. He's got. He's actually got, got two names, uh, but one of, uh, one of our younger uh, guys it's, that's been a phenomenal leader for us here within F3 Omaha uh, I've gotten to know this guy uh, just, you know, as we've talked about work and life uh, and we share a passion for data and, and data visualization. So um, uh, he's also responsible for a lot of the the Power BI stuff that, that you see out there if you're looking at uh, AO attendance data. Um, so huge help. And uh, so I've got our man Baby Shoes uh, on the call today and uh, Baby Shoes, this will be good. So So start us off at the beginning, like tell us about that first workout and then Talk us through the name uh, sort of saga that you're dealing with yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the few people to be named twice. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, so first workout, you want you want the very first one or you want the second one where I got named named to set my second name? I can give. You uh, let's let's do the very first. Let's do both. I would love to. Yeah. Hear so the very the very first workout was at the maze uh, back in 2020. Uh, so COVID had kind of, uh, ramped up. We were a couple months into that and, uh, my pastor, my high school youth pastor from Brookside, uh, his name is Nitro. He doesn't come out much anymore. He's oh, yeah. to, he trying to send him a message every once in a while to come out, but he, he, uh, he dragged me out, uh, on an early Thursday morning in May. Um, and it was interesting. There were, you know, kind of two groups that were split because I think at the time at least, um, the goal was to not have anything bigger than maybe like 10 people. I'm not sure exactly what the COVID rules were. Yeah. But anyways, we had two different groups. I remember FDIC was leading us through the workout that day, uh, but he technically wasn't on the queue. I think he's like Lemon Law or something when I went back and tried to find that. Um, but yeah, it was just like workout with a couple of guys I knew. It was, it was my youth pastor and he brought another someone else. So it was two, two FNGs that day. And, and I was just sitting there doing the workouts. And I'm like, man, these guys are taking it like, why are they not running faster? I'm like, I don't want to do these monkey humpers. Like, I mean, immediately right out of the gate, like you like learn something about some of these exercises and you're like, why would like the person not be sprinting their heart out? So mm-hmm. we don't have to do, do this exercise any longer than we have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and the beat down comes around. It was, it was good. It was, it was fun. Um, they ask you to tell it, tell you, tell you, tell a little bit about yourself. And I, uh, you know, was talking about just high school cause I just graduated. I started college. It was in my first year of that. Um, and my high school youth pastor throws out that I got like a 36 on my ACT and I'm like, well, it wasn't a 36, but 31 and then FDIC landed on ACT. And so okay. I did know it. That was my very first name. Uh, so it was May of 2020 and I didn't come back for a year and a half later. Later, I was like five thirties too early. It was kind of weird with all these weird names they have for stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and sister act, uh, kept nagging me about coming out. I worked with Sister Act as well um, at our church, and he just nagged me and nagged me and nagged me. And then he said, dude, there's a site we're opening two minutes from your house. Uh, I was living with my parents at the time. And so August of 20, 
two, I think, 2021, 20, 21, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, 21, August of 21, he launched that site. Uh, and it wasn't until the second week, um, I think Yogi was queuing that week, um, that I decided to get up and go. And at the end of the workout, all the Millard South guys, uh, I have no, don't even remember the workout, but all the Millard South guys were taking a photo with Sister Act. Uh, they got him a t-shirt and stuff, all the Millard South graduates. And I was asking them, you know, like Griswold was there, Yogi, Overtime. Um, yeah, just a bunch of those guys out all graduated from Millard South. Asked them when they graduated. And they were like, 01, 02, 2000, 1999. I'm like, dang, you guys are old. I graduated in 2019 here just a couple <laughs> years ago. And Overtime looks at me and he goes, man, what's your nickname? ACT? Man, it should be Baby Shoes. And I'm like, well, that's way cooler than ACT. Yeah. So. At that point, I was like, we're sticking with that. And nobody said anything otherwise. I mean, nobody knew me. So, uh, and Sister Act did know, but he was like, well, we'll let it slide. Yeah. And so it was, it was that ever since. Yeah. A couple people, I know Tater Tot was, was a little bit on the fence when he found out after after me coming around for a couple months. But he was like, yeah, you're right. It is a cool nickname. Yeah. Well, and in PaxNet, I think you have both, right? It's a, I do. It's... I do. Sadly, uh, when we went to move to PaxNet, um, iMac combined it. So uh, now everyone knows the secret. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I you, I always have wondered if that would work. Like if you just showed up and pretended like a new guy, like if it had, if it's been a long time, right. And you just are like, Oh yeah, this is my first time. You know, I think we would probably give you a new name. Like, you know, yeah. especially if nobody knew you, but well, that's awesome. And what did you think? So remind me, cause growing, like you did, um, you played sports. I, I'm assuming a lot here just because you're a, a fit young guy. You could just have high metabolism though. Uh, but did you play sports and run track and all that sort of stuff? Or tell us about your kind of fitness background. Oh, uh, I just love being active. I was always, always outside as a kid. And then, you know, middle school, you start doing some of the sports. I didn't do anything, um, you know, other than like you do soccer with all the other five-year-olds when you're real young, but you know, middle school kind of came around like track the most out of anything. And it was the least contact. So my mom was okay with it. Cause she's like, yeah, you probably won't get a concussion if you do track and field. So did that in cross country and, and, in middle school and high school and, and just love to, to run and be active. Um, and so, um, yeah, it was, it was a really, really nice transition into, into F3 that kind of have, a little bit of a background of, of already wanting to work hard and 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 uh and push on these workouts to get a good workout in it's like man you have the opportunity to do that every day at f3 like you yeah. can take it as easy as you want or you can go kill the workout um and so yeah definitely ran a lot of tracks still still do run pretty often i help coach so i'm still running workouts more than i thought i would in in uh late college and now out of college did you play did you run track in college I did not. So I got a really good scholarship to UNO and UNO doesn't have a track program for mm-hmm. men. So I took the, took the scholarship over trying to find another college that I could run at. So sure. But, and now you coach at, uh, I do. I, I coach, uh, so I started at Millard South where I graduated from my sophomore and junior year of college. And then my senior year, uh, the head coach from Millard South transferred over to Elkhorn North. And so I was like, Hey, if someone want help, I'll be happy to help you to follow you. So now, we finished two years at Elkhorn, Elkhorn North, and I'm on to my third. Nice. That's awesome. And is it cross country or, or like? Yep. Yeah, okay. cross country and track. Yeah. Both That's both. awesome. So both long distance and the, and short, do you do like hurdles? I did. I did. I did do hurdles in high school. Uh, it's not what I coach though in, in track now. Uh, I help with usually the 800 to the mile. I mean, anything kind of just in a little bit of a longer distance. So nice. Have, do you know stitches? You ever heard his story? Mm-mm. He got he got his name uh, trying to go over a, a hurdle. Uh, <laughs> ended up getting stitches from it. There, so. there there have been times when I've been on the queue schedule at like a high school that I know will have or any school that will have hurdles. I'm like, oh, maybe you should try to like go over hurdles or incorporate hurdles into the beatdown. Yeah, as long as you say the I, disclaimer. I try, to, I try to avoid it. I know most guys would probably not be eager to jump over hurdles. Yeah, that would be intimidating. Well, I, I love it. And I think um, – you know, certainly you've done a good job of maintaining your health and, and fitness level. What, 
you know, as you came into F3, where have you found your, your groove? Like after that first post, I'm assuming that was the launch of main stage at Millard South. And then did you, like, I guess I would be curious, like what made you, you took a year off, but what made you decide like, okay, I'm going to be all in on this thing now. Cause I think you know, yeah. you're posting, I don't know, three, four days a week or something. Yeah. I, t- I try to go three times a week, depending on just how my schedule works out or mm-hmm. for the week. But yeah, three times a week early on. I remember, I remember going and, uh, and I, I seriously only went for probably the first month, only the main stage. And I only went because it was fun to beat all the old guys. That's what I told myself. I'm yes. like, we're like, we're going to go run stairs. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to see how fast I can run stairs and see how much of a distance I can put between me and the next guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was my goal. Every single time I went for seriously the first month. So for about four times, uh, didn't go to coffee. I was like, I just want to go back to bed because I will have to, to work here at nine and then class. And so I thought the extra hour would make a difference, but I mean, I don't think it did. So you would, you would go to work out, then go home and go back to sleep. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, sometimes man. I would sleep, sometimes I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, I've always been a morning person. I mean, getting up at like seven or so, you know, compared to my buddies in college, we were getting up at like nine or 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, it was probably after a month or so of going to only main stage and not going to coffee that, you know, sister act was finally like, like, come on, man, like come to coffee. And I went at one time and, and I was like, it wasn't bad. Like, you know, I just kind of sat around and listened to guys just tell stories and talk and talk about their lives and, and really didn't engage. But it was really once I started going to coffee that I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like these guys are pretty mm-hmm. cool. And and my motivation to show up and not just try to beat all the old guys every single week kind of went away. And I mean, still, still wanted to do that, you know, work hard in the workout and help me push, push me to work harder in the workouts, the beat downs. But yeah, I mean, coffee was, it wasn't a month, month and a half later that I started going to coffee and I started figuring like, Oh, like this is what, this is what F3 is about. Yeah. That's really cool. And where did you find, so like, cause we have all these different things, right? we got coupon sites and weight sites and we've got halfway house and Fury road. I mean, where did you kind of, where have you found your, your groove? Like, do you like to hit all the different sites or do you kind of stick to a, a few of the same? Oh man. I, I definitely avoid any coupon workouts, okay. Not a fan, which maybe I, it means I should start going to more coupon workouts. Yeah. Uh, if you hate it, but I, yeah, I avoid those like the plague. <laughs> nice. Um, I see what you but did yeah, there. no, yeah. Never, never been a fan of coupon workouts. I mean, I'll do it if I, if I happen to show up to a beat down and I miss the pre blast thing as a coupon workout and I'll, I, I'll stay, you know, it's not like I won't get in my car and go home, but, uh, I love, I love just kind of the, uh, beat down style of, of main stage where it's just, uh, I forget what they call them, but just, uh, boot no, camp. No yeah. Boot camp, thank you. Yeah, boot camp style. Of course, I love running, so I try to get out to the labyrinth. It was a lot easier before I moved uh, when I got married to to go out to like the labyrinth and stuff. And so now, uh, now I get, was well. Now that I passed this, the flyer, I can go to paradise. But mm-hmm. I mean, that was that was it was either twenty minutes to labyrinth or twenty minutes down to the sand lot on Thursdays. And so yeah didn't get around as much uh, to running sites here in the last year. But yeah, I love to go to the running sites. Love to go to the beat downs. Um, really just a driving factor was the, the, um, just the guys Mm -hmm. I I started in in South, the Southwest sector, um, mission forge, when that came around, I started going to that more often main stage, of course, uh, Fridays. Um, I I don't think I posted on Fridays actually too consistently when I got into it, but, um, yeah, just West, West O Southwest O is where I was at. And. And especially main uh, main stage and mission, mission forge. I mean, I was there every week. You get to know the guys that come every week, obviously. So I was, you know, see them on the schedule, you know, somewhere close. I'm like, well, got to go back, got to go support them. So yeah, I I love that, and it's so cool. I, I'm curious from your perspective, and, and maybe it's just um, maybe there's nothing here, but but at your age, right? So you're coming to this group, and you're what 25, 20 six or uh, i started i started when i was 19 really uh, okay consistently. i started coming consistently when i was 19 and i'm i'm 22 now soon to be 23 okay yeah yeah so i mean how what because when i think of that when i think of what i was doing at 22 or 19 like this is the last thing i would have wanted to do right is be around these yeah old guys right and and maybe like like you said i think it's funny because i totally would have been like yeah maybe i can just prove that I'm 
faster or stronger or whatever. And then, and then that would wear off. But um, what do you think it was that made that appealing to you at, at a young age, like compared to like your friends or as you've tried to like EH people or maybe talk mm-hmm. to other guys that are in your same, same boat? What, what's yeah. the, I don't know what keeps you coming back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th- definitely the guys, that's what they say. You come for the fitness and you still stay around for the fellowship. I mean, every guy, I feel like it reiterates that at some point, you, know, you hear that from so many guys in F3. Um, but man, yeah, early on, it was, it was the accountability. Um, mm-hmm. and not, and not like I was having guys text me, but just knowing like, cause there was, there was kind of a point there when, when I was in college, uh, where if I wasn't at, when, if I wasn't coaching and, and running the workout with the kids, I wasn't going to go run on my own. Like if I could get somebody else to come or work out with me, come run with me, I was game, you know, every, every single day of the week. Uh, if, if that was, you know, I had my buddy walking over to my house and knocking on the door and we were going to go running, I, I would do that. I mean, and there was a stint of that, that I had where my neighbor was running every single day during COVID. And hmm. so I'm like, yeah, I'll come run with you. And so, it was the accountability of that uh, in F3 where it didn't matter what site you go to. You're always going to have guys that are going to be there working out with you. Um, that was, I mean, early on, that was like, I'm like, I, I like to work out. I feel good afterwards. So yeah. it's not like I don't want to work out and feel lazy. So knowing that I would show up and, and be able to suffer through a workout with uh, the other guys around me was definitely what cut kept me coming and I mean, just all the laughs you have at coffee too is so so much fun. I yeah. love, love all the stories. That's awesome. You get, you get here and you get to share at coffee. Yeah. Well, no, I I think that's really cool. I so I'm just going to ask this question because when I was 19, I was heavy into alcohol and drugs. So do you do you just find yourself not partying or not like living that sort of like that this like kind of cliche college lifestyle or uh, def- definitely not. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was my, the way my parents, you know, you know, raised me or something, or, uh, I will say a lot of it is just my relationship, uh, with Jesus and my faith in Christ, uh, is a driving factor, you know, to stay, be, be in the world, but not of the world. Mm. Um, and so I'm surrounded by people that may not be followers of Christ as well, uh, who are drinking, who are doing drugs, who are out partying, who are out sleeping around. And, you know, the God has called me to a greater life and um and it's not those things but to be around those people um and still you know share them the gospel with them so yeah. uh definitely i don't like i said don't know if it's that uh my parents but definitely i would say you know a large portion is just my faith um but yeah i mean i i love being around people so i remember like at times i was like man i kind of wish i did live like on the dorms to go to some of the parties just to hang out with kids my age instead of living mm-hmm. at home with my parents i mean I saved a money, a ton of money. So that was kind of nice, but, yeah. um, uh, I was, I did at times find myself missing that. Um, but being on the other end of it now, I mean, I see guys on, from a fitness perspective, perspective, I see guys I went to high school with and just people in general who put on 20, 30 pounds because they were just drinking all throughout college. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, dang, like, I'm like, how can you do that? Like, I love yeah. like just being in shape. It feels good. Like I, I can't imagine like, I mean, yeah, and that's that's just me personally. I mean, I enjoy enjoy working out, like I've said before. But uh, yeah, I just wasn't wasn't drawn to that. And and I mean, I will say I, I do enjoy spending time with people. Like I said, I like to uh, go out to the bars with with friends, uh, but avoid you know. I'll only ever ever have like a, a beer or two. Yeah, and so I'd be shocked if I get to that second one. I'm not completely out of it just because I never drink. So yeah, uh, so. it's, it's so cool and, and really commendable and just want, want to affirm you that like you made the right choice. Right. I think it like, when I look back, I'm like, damn, why did, why did I, you know, because yeah. I, I think what, you know, what I would tell you is it's completely empty, right? There's nothing, there's nothing there, right? There's no, like, there's nothing you're missing out on. And I think it just sort of is this thing, like our society is, like, that's just what you do, right? You go to college, you spend a bunch of time partying, and unfortunately, like, I think it's hard to get out of that. You develop some habits, right? You develop the habit of not taking care of yourself instead of, you know, so just really, uh, ultimately, I'm jealous uh, that you <laughs> decided to, to not do that, but it really commendable. And um, I think it just speaks volumes to who you are as a man. So I just, I love it. I, you know, I'm curious, and um, 
we're bouncing all over the place a little bit here, but it's, but it's awesome. And, and so at some point in your journey, uh, like ultimate Frisbee becomes a thing. Like where, where did that start? Cause when I, yeah. I, when I see you out there, I feel like you're, you're like a, a pro at all, ultimate Frisbee. But. Yeah. Uh, I just enjoy, enjoy throwing a Frisbee around. Um, I did it, you know, just growing up with my dad, nothing crazy, but it wasn't like my dad was, some professional frisbee player and he was handing handing down the reins to me uh, <laughs> you know, i just would be out in the circle sometimes we grew up in a circle and you know eventually be like oh you know someone got tired of shooting hoops so i'm like well dad you want to throw the frisbee around and and he could kind of stand in place you know with that he didn't have to run around too much uh, and so i think he also enjoyed but you know i just enjoyed throwing a frisbee as a kid and then in middle school and high school you kind of go to these different, you know, gym class or youth group, or sometimes you'll play ultimate Frisbee and it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then when I went to college, I heard there was at UNO an ultimate Frisbee club uh, and then we traveled. And so unfortunately my career for that, I'll say it in my college career, um, it uh, didn't pan out because of COVID. Mm. So you know, it was super strict about clubs meeting or anything. So it really killed the club for about a year and a half when I was at UNO, um, but started to play um, a little bit more like structured instead of just kind of like, hey, we're going to casually play. And we don't really know the rules, but we kind of do from you know high school into early college. From when I joined the team, I was like, oh, this is a ton of fun. And and being fast helps you. And yeah. then you can just always be open. So really like just learn to love the sport um, really early on in college, like from a competitive standpoint. And then uh, after COVID, we, we picked up the team back up. Uh, they finally let us start meeting again and just continue to go out once again. I mean, just it was a good way to be fit. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just a fun sport. I mean, it's a, it's a little different than running and just running for no point. You get a run to, you know, catch the Frisbee or you know, kick a ball like soccer, you know, something like that. You're, you're involving your hands. So uh, a lot of fun. And I think I just had a little bit of a knack for it. I'm not sure if I, if I did or not, but I seemed to pick it up quicker than I felt like others did. Yeah. Um, and then the coach who helped coach us was involved in the local uh, club teams that travel. Uh, and so he's like, Hey, come, come try out. He's like, I don't know if you'd make the team or not. Like probably be at the bottom of the, the rung if you did, but uh, why don't you come out? And I was like, you know, what? like I want to make the team. So I put in some time, you know, try to learn the sport even more. And we was always asking for feedback and just was like, love the people in, in it as well. Um, I mean, there's some fun people uh, that played the sport and, and were better than me and I wanted to learn from them. So took the time to, to learn from them and played the club team. So I did that. This is my third year playing on a club team. So the last in 2022 or whatever, mm. started my first club team and traveled to like Colorado, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Kansas, wow. some of the closest places. So it's a, it's a fun sport. And they're okay with you still playing at the disco. Even at, I, I tell them, I try to get them to come to the disco. <laughs> uh, and so some of them have come and they are, they're, they like a little bit more competitive level. And I try to tell them, I'm like, it's, it's competitive a little bit, you know, guys mm -hmm. like to win. Um, but it's definitely not the same skill level that they're used to. So yeah, a couple it, of them, double jump. Uh, if you know him, I played on, on uh, the club team with him for a year and, and he loves coming. Um, so he's, he enjoys it. So. Well, I remember, I think the one I was at, so I went to the launch and then I, and then I think I would, I don't think I've been back just, <clears throat> and mostly for me, it's like, I'm too old and too competitive. And I know I would, I, I just, I think I would hurt myself, but I feel like you, you passed it to yourself. Uh, <laughs> What, or I don't know. It was just crazy. I remember watching. I was like, "Wow, this guy is like in his element here. Like he, yeah. something you enjoy and are really good at." So yeah. that's pretty cool. And it's been cool to see guys and their two point os and some of the younger guys come out and participate in that. You know, I think it's been really cool. Yeah, I mean, just like any site, you start to develop a culture. Uh, and Scuba and now Dirt King and Amazing have done a fantastic job of. Um, curating the culture and keeping it up um mm -hmm. over the year and a um, couple months it's been been a site and yeah just you have guys that that come every week you have guys that only come to the disco which i would love for them to come to other f3 yeah. stuff outside of the disco but if i mean if that's if that's all they get for now i mean better that than nothing kind of thing and yeah so, uh 
yeah, and, and the 2.0s, I mean, we just had Tonka, uh, G, GP's 2.0 uh, come in, in, in queue. Uh, and, I mean, it was awesome to, to hear, I mean, kind of like me, shows up and, and more so only, only in the aspect kind of like me of, of being so young and he was willing to lead, uh, willing to be vulnerable in his COT. I mean, kind of a proud dad moment, I'm sure, for, for Golden, Golden Pike. Um, but I mean, yeah, I just, it's just fun to see all the kids that get excited and, and, uh, especially, I mean, F3 as a whole, any, any, any guy in F3, I think is willing to not go a hundred percent with little kids around and, and be super competitive and give them a chance to, to figure out the sport or the game or whatever we're doing to feel a part of it, feel included, uh, to maybe score some points. So, yeah. I love it. It's, it's been really cool. I well, appreciate your help with that one too. I know, uh, I think we interviewed Scuba a couple of weeks ago. I don't know that his episodes posted yet, but, um, definitely help, helped him get his passion off the ground. It helps to have at least another guy that knows what he's doing. Right. So, yeah. 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 So I would be curious, you know, so fitness wise, um, you know, it sounds like you've kind of just, you've been on this trajectory and I mean, like what, like a guy like you, do you have, what are your fitness goals or do you feel like you're sort of at this, this peak at 22 and you're, are you working on gaining muscle or are you maintaining where are you, where are you at overall? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't have too many fitness goals other than just to continue to stay in shape. Um, I mean, there's one and I'm so bad at it cause I don't, I don't do anything to, to take the initiative to step forward. So, um, but I've never run a half marathon. Everyone's shocked in it. Oh, come on. Run. Uh, and I know we just had this halfway house on yesterday, Sunday, and yeah. I wanted to go and Saturday night, of course, ruined some plans on Sunday mornings. Yeah. It wasn't even my fault. You know, I had to, <laughs> I had to, we had to call in. It was just late night for me and my, my wife, different story. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I would love to run a half marathon, sign up for like a race, like good life has you. And I just, I just never get around to it. I mean, mm. like, oh, the cost and I think I could do it, you know, just, just the lack of initiative sometimes yeah um but yeah maintaining i mean uh, for fitness goals for me is is a big one um I'm not trying to put on any muscle i think you know i'm happy with the the, the muscle i have now but um like long term like when i'm 30 so i'm about to turn 23 seven years from now i would love to be in the same shape i'm in now mm. you know it's, it's hard you start to deteriorate deteriorate as you get older you don't get to say in the same physical shape and have the same recovery time you do when you're this young. Um, but if I can be really close to where I'm at now, and I mean, if I could even go up, that would be awesome. I don't know, in fitness level, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, but just thinking down the road to kids, I have no idea when me and my wife will have our first child. But yeah. all I know is I want to be super in shape for my kids and my family uh, as long as I can. So yeah. whatever, whatever that means for me right now, it's doing F3 and Keep, keeping up what I'm doing and maybe in three, five years, seven years, whatever it is, it's, it's pulling back the reins a little bit on how much I'm doing and how much I'm spreading my time around or whatever, ultimate Frisbee and F3 and running and coaching and stuff and being like, well, you know, it turns out you can't run, do an F3 workout in the morning and then run in the afternoon yeah. and then also have ultimate Frisbee at 10 PM at night. Right. Uh, you can't, yeah. you can't wake up the next day and still function when you're 32 years old. Do you I do that now? That's your, you do that some days now? Sometimes, sometimes yep. So okay. uh, there's times I'll get up uh, and go uh, do an F3 workout. And then I will say if I'm, if I'm planning on doing something later that afternoon, so like coaching, I'm going to go run and I know they do workouts on, you know, Tuesdays, Thursdays or whatever. It's going to be a day where we have a workout. Uh, I'll, I'll take it easier during the beat down, hmm. uh, but then I'll run. And then, yeah, sometimes we do, uh, summer leagues, we do fall leagues, we have winter leagues, the fall and winter are indoors. Um, but yeah, those are in the evenings, the, that morning, if I you know, promise I'd go to an F3 workout or I just want to go cause I enjoy the guys. Yeah. I, I pull back a little bit in the beat down or, or I know later that night I'm like, whatever. I mean, I just going to go either. I'll be a little bit more tired. So. Yeah. It, it's so fascinating to me. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit mesmerized just cause I, I have no idea what it would be like to have it be in like a 22 year old body and not be like under the influence. So to me, it's, it's sort of like, like, man, I bet you could do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And yeah. you're one of the, one of the things that stuck with me, it was at the Chris Gradville, uh, foundation fundraiser. I forget the name. Brick builder. The, not the brick builder. It 
It was the one where we're at the construction building, you know. Oh, the actual like fundraiser event. Yeah. Yeah. The auction that they had, the um, silent auction. Um, someone got up and, and was sharing a story. I think it was at this event that they were sharing it about Chris Bradaville and Nugent. Um, that they were like, he just tried to maximize the day. I mean, he was out closing down the bars and, and getting that last beer in with somebody mm-hmm. and then was up the next morning to go work out. And I'm like, that's fantastic. I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of been my, ever since I heard that, I mean, I think I kind of did that a little bit, but now it's like, if I were to describe that to somebody, that's what I would tell them. Like, I want to maximize my day. Like I want to, if I have friends going out to the bar and I want to work out also the next day, like I'll still go out to the bar with them. Uh, and I'm just not going to drink, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have no drinks or just one drink and then mm-hmm. I'm going to set my alarm and I'm going to be up to be there because I want to enjoy the full day. Yeah. You know, I don't want to miss a moment kind of thing. And so that's awesome. No, that's good. I, I like that. You know, I'm curious on the, like the second half fellowship piece, I think as you came into the group, you quickly, well, I don't know if it was quickly, but talk us through like, how did you first find like the hate crowd and kind of help to, you know, build some of that, some of those relationships and would love to hear about your experience with the shield lock too. Yeah. Oh man. It's been, it's been rough. (laughs) I'll say that. Like, I won't say it's, it kind of like clicked. Like I found the hate guys and our shield lock has been amazing and the fellowship is good. Um, and so, yeah, early on, I didn't know what hate was until we were going through some book. What's it called? Free to lead, maybe? Free to lead. Book? Yep. Maybe, I don't know. And it kind of just lays out sad clown and all the different things. And, and I remember Kaki, was, it was in his garage at, uh, in February. We were going to a book on Mondays. Anyways, he talks about hate versus respect and what that means. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And didn't think much to it. Uh, and then, you know, people kind of mention it and they're like, Oh, there's some other guys your age and, and here, and, you know, Patchy Adams was one of them he posted <laughs> up, up in Elkhorn and it was a little bit of a drive for me. So I just didn't, you know, never met him before. Um, Urkel came around. He had, I think two years, he was 28, 29. Now he's out of hate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taxman as well. They were both guys who actually were going to the same sites as me. So kind of met them who were, you know, closer to closer to my, my age mm-hmm. uh, um, that I was in, you know, just communication with no shield lock or anything. And it wasn't until really, I think, uh, Gator mentioned to me, he's like, you know, you guys, you guys should try to do a shield lock. And I, I kind of knew about him. I always was like, man, I don't, I have a small group I go to with church. I don't need another group to try to attend yeah. things with and do, do things with. And, and, uh, and yeah, Gator was just like, sometimes you just got to do things like for other people. Hmm. I'm like, all right. I'm like, Good I don't, advice. I don't need okay. the lock. I don't need the accountability. Uh, and, you know, it's not like I'm not, you know, filling my cup up, you know, outside with another small group like I was, but you know, sometimes you got to do something for somebody else and it's like, all right, you're right. So kind of took some, some initiative off of that and texted tax man, Urkel and patchy. I'm like, guys, we got to do a little shield lock. I don't know how everyone else's shield lock went, but it was usually, Someone's like, let's try to get breakfast this week. And then no one responded. And then <laughs> like, well, actually, I'm busy. What about next week? I mean, it was, and sometimes we wouldn't text for like a month. We'd see each other at beatdowns, but just never organized or something. Or when we saw each other, we tried to, like, maybe we should try to do breakfast next week. And nothing ever came out of it just because, you know, I don't know. We're young and, and not, not uh, proactive on that stuff. Yeah. But that was kind of the first initial hate thing that I kind of took uh you know jumped into uh and meeting those and being and and meeting with those guys uh outside of f3 uh just learning more about urkel's life learning more about tax man learning more about patchy just who they are as guys outside of f3 Mm. um and they all have awesome stories uh you know each one has whatever you know from when they're young from when they're you know something a month ago they just got fun stories Mm. uh and then you know, Patchy was always like, we just got to get more guys. Like, let's just make a giant group chat with every guy and an F3 that's hate and, and try to try to reach out and do pop-ups and stuff like the respect uh, pop-ups that they do. And we've done a couple. Yeah, <laughs> We haven't been very good about it, but uh, that's when I kind of then reached out and met E85, his brother, Blue Bunny. We have iMac down in Sarpy. Uh, Sundance and Sarpy as well. I mean, there's there's a bunch of have a hate guys that I wish I would reach out to more. Mm. Um, only a 
an aspect of just trying to get trying to get them. I mean, I could care less if we go out and get breakfast once a month. We do hate pop ups once a month, like respect, but at least just trying to meet up at beat downs. Um, I think we should be way better. At, I know Blue Bunny and, and E85 are, are tight. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, you know, they're brothers, so they, they got some history, but yeah. just kind of just trying, like I said, meeting guys at, at different beat downs, I think is that's something we're already committed to, you know. Some yeah. of these guys got families. IMAC, uh, Sundance just had a kid. Urkel's about to have his third. He's out of hate, yeah. but we kind of just give him the the honorary hate badge. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I just, I mean, just trying to meet, meet those guys where they're at, um, at least just create connections. I mean, not that they don't, you know, they're all, they're all creating connections with the guys where they're posting most, but it's fun just to know guys that are your age posting. So yeah, it's been, it's been tough, but we try to, we try to do something. What's, would be curious, like what's been, have you found it challenging to build relationships with some of the older guys? I mean, I, it, to me, I think it, it's like, well, you know, I guess because you got married halfway through F three two, right? So at yeah. the beginning, it would have been like, well, all these old guys are talking about their wives and their kids, and I'm not really in that. Phase, yeah, but. it was it was definitely interesting. Um, it was it was kind of fun uh, early on in F three. Anytime I went to coffee, I would just sit there. I just I would just listen. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't try to try to bring something up. And if somebody asked me something, you know, I I talk, but. It, I just listen really and, you know, maybe make a comment here or there if the story, you know, someone's sharing a story or something. Uh, and it was interesting because uh, I remember Hard Hat one point told me, he's like, dude, like, I didn't know what to talk to you about. You were 20 years old. Like, <laughs> you, you play Pokemon or something? Like, I didn't know what to talk to you about. Like, and it was just kind of funny, uh, you know, and, and I was okay with that. I was more than happy to sit there and just listen. Um, I don't know if it's just growing up in church. Yeah. Uh, I was surrounded by some older guys at times and I just learned, I'm like, these guys have so much more wisdom than me. They've mm -hmm. lived more li a longer life than me. So they have more stories. And I was totally okay with just sitting back and listening about what they had to share about different topics. And so that's what I did early on. Uh, and then eventually uh, at some point, someone mentioned something that I can want to hop in and, and comment on or share my story. And, and that's, you know, you know, eventually I think what grew and made it not easier, but, uh, you know, kind of ignited a, a relationship between me and another guy in F3, um, you know, just more than happy to just listen at times. And I think that's for me, at least it helped me, you know, I just listened to what guys wanted to talk about and, and, and jumped in when I could, or asked a question when I could, or otherwise I would just, you know, I was like, I said, more than happy just to hear, hear other guys' stories about yeah. what they're going through, what they had been through. It was, it's just, it was, it's always fun for me. I love, I love hearing stories. So hmm, that's cool. I, I think that's, uh, it's interesting. I'm trying to figure out like, and just kudos to your folks. Cause I think they just like, clearly the way you were raised is, is phenomenal because you kind of already have some of these, like you're humble, you got a strong faith, you're willing to learn from other people, but you're also like, willing to be assertive and go after things too. So I, I think that's just really cool. I, uh, if this next baby of ours is a, is a boy, I'm going to reach out to your dad and say, how did you, how did you raise this kid? Cause um, uh, yeah, it's cool hearing your story. I curious. Cause the other thing you did, I remember you reached out to, I think you reached out to me one time, right? We talked about like, you were talking about, Hey, I'm in school. I'm doing this sort of thing. So I feel like you took initiative to kind of develop some, I don't know if you'd even call it mentoring relationships, but just to like sort of leverage that, right. To say, Hey, I, you know, so curious, like as you moved into then like getting married and, and that sort of phase of life, um, was it helpful to have a group of sort of old guys around to kind of run yeah. things by? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh man. Yeah. It, it's fun. Um, just hearing, getting married and hearing stories from guys uh you know they're like oh man like my wife was upset last night and they're like yep join join the party like <laughs> do it uh and and just guys willing to come around and support you um i mean yeah it's just to take initiative i think too um there's so many guys in f3 that are willing to help uh a fellow pax member a fellow guy uh, a fellow man just mm -hmm. in life what they're going through so many guys are willing to to help uh i think about the windstorm that just happened recently 
uh, hearing about kickstand and the guys that came over and helped him get the tree cut up mm-hmm. and like, Oh yeah, 30 minutes. Um, the guys, uh, tea party and, uh, jump street on my bachelor party. I, I let him know my bachelor party was Wednesday before I got married on Friday. And I had always posted at uh, main stage, obviously on Wednesday. And I reached out to him. I go, Hey, you don't have to change anything about your beat down, but can I just advertise it as my bachelor party beat down? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to get the guys who are in my party to come to F3 uh, that morning. And I would love to just, you know, just tell guys and try to make it a bit, big fun event. And he goes, yeah, sure. And they had flipped the whole thing. Uh, I don't know if they were planning on a beat down, but they switched it to ultimate Frisbee is what Tea party told me. Oh, cool. Uh, they, uh, they, his specific COT was like, here's the 10 things on how to, how to be a great husband. Uh, mm-hmm. Sundays are our football Sundays. Make sure you tell your wife in advance that you will not do anything but sit in front of the TV <laughs> for four hours. It was a joke uh, in, in these 10 rules of life. You know, yeah. your wife wants space to do the laundry and dishes. So make sure you give her all the space she needs. Uh, put your feet up and, and, and crack open a beer. You know, uh, <laughs> she has time to do all that and relax uh and stuff like that it was it was a fun joke when you know, gave me he gave me some serious advice but just these guys are are willing to uh and reach out if you reach out to them are, are willing to to talk and take time with you urkel is my main man i mean it's who i was site q co-site q with uh i mean he's like i don't know if it's just we've spent so much time together or what but he's like exactly who i need at this time in my life and i i hope forever I mean, the rest of our lives he's such a good dude uh and he's 30 now two kids third, third one on the way married or i think he's got married young too like me but uh like every single time i'm like oh man i'm struggling in this i'm struggling with that and you know marriage and i'm like oh another another night of being a homeowner something broke yeah. and he just like been there done that man and he was willing to listen give wisdom i mean these these guys and in, in any aspect of you know career advice life advice marriage advice advice for your kids somebody's out there willing to share it and willing to come alongside you in f3 i mean it it's just that's why i'm just so eager to like reach out and, and know as many guys as i can it's yeah. it's somebody that are willing to help well it's it's cool just that you have the courage to do that you know and yeah i think being able being recognizing that at your age and be and then just having the courage to ask you know i think there's guys you know that are older right that probably are like oh i should ask this guy about this thing and they never do right they're sort of afraid or for whatever reason we think like oh, i should probably know that by now you know and so so then you google it instead of just asking a guy that you know somebody i i always think you know, you could read read a bunch of books, but like learning from somebody else's firsthand experience, it, there's nothing like it. So that's, yeah. that's really cool. I mean, I agree. I know nothing about home owning. I know I, I'm renting a house right now, but kind of doing some of the house projects, plumbing, electrical, you know, a light fixture that you think might be a little simpler for some <laughs> guy. I don't know the first thing about it. I won't say the first thing, but I know a little bit. I still called on my buddy who's an electrician. I'm like, Hey man, like this thing seems a little odd. Like, can you come like, just I'm like, you don't have to do anything. I will do it all. Just yeah. sit here and just watch me. So I don't electrocute myself. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, that's, I'm all for it. I'm all for, uh, just being, being vulnerable about what you don't know. Heck yeah. I do not know it. Yeah. Sorry. Please, please help. I need help. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Liberty Core Real Estate is your homegrown real estate broker. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate, whether personal or investment, Armando, aka Brian, and Megan Michaels Company is ready to serve you. With Command Center in Old Town Elkhorn and agents all throughout the metro, they are more than ready to guide and serve you in your next real estate endeavor. Whether your next move needs to happen now or in five years, call or text Armando at 402 770 2165 to get your questions answered. And a special offer for F3 Nation PAX members, Liberty Corps will donate $250 to your sponsor of choosing for every closed transaction. Stop looking, start finding today with Liberty Core Real Estate. Well, I do I do want to get um, kind of your thoughts on the third F, on the faith piece. And, and I, I remember specifically your VQ um, 
you know, just, I think you just have always been bold about what you believe. And I just, I love it. That's been another thing that I, I, you know, at a younger age, I certainly wasn't that confident in what I believed. And so we'd just love to kind of hear your, your journey from a faith perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I've always just grown up going to church, uh, with my parents, Brookside here in Omaha. Um, and so just growing up, you hear about the stuff, you know, you kind of just, uh, a pattern for you, you know, and kind of in high school is when I was really like, Oh, like, you know, you start figuring out, like, you know, it's not just your parents dragging you to church every week. Um, you know, you got to have some initiative to it. You have to want to go. Um, and that's when I really learned to love, uh, the people I was around at church. Uh, I really learned to love what I was learning and, and like, like, Oh, receptive. I was receptive and open to hearing what, you know, people had to say, the pastors, um, open to hearing what God had for me in my life. Um, as I went to church, I was like, Oh, okay. You know, you start to figure it out. And, and, uh, in that high school era, I think most people at least start asking more questions or, you know, in just life in general, you, that high school of college area, it's like, okay, you got to start making decisions for yourself. Now, what are you going to do with your time? What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to believe in? What do you want to do after college? You got to make those decisions on your own. You don't have somebody telling you what to do every day. So anyways, in high school, I was like, all right, I I think I want this to be a part of my life and be something uh, bigger than me. So really gave my life to Christ. I won't say the first time I kind of did when I was young, but you know, Mm -hmm. so when you make it your own, it's a little bit different. And so, just held on to that, continue to go to church and, and try to find uh, opportunities or groups of people pouring into me. I did some men's groups at Brookside that was, um, you know, about Jesus's life and how to be, uh, you know, really similar to F3 in the aspect of, of being authentic men. Um, it was called 33. You know, they had like an acronym of being authentic and I can't remember, uh, but and I think you were in a plague, but no, I don't know if I was there. there but I got the, I got, right there. there's a, so, there's a whole series. This is, this is, the, whole, this is a man, a man in his marriage. We should, we yeah, should read that uh, one. Yeah. A whole, a whole series on, I think it's, I mean, besides that, if you're, if you're not Christian, I think there's just good points. Uh, obviously they do relate it back to the Bible, but I think there's just good points on how to be a great husband, how to be a great man, how to be a great father in your life um, that they you know, iterate through that book. So I'd encourage a lot of guys, but did that in, you know, in college and, and just was like, you know, it did help that I worked at a church. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you're kind of required to go to church every Sunday. Um, were you, so, were you in the band there or were you, would you? No, no. no definitely not the band. Can, okay. Cannot sing, cannot play. An <laughs> More of a parking guy, life. parking attendant. I was, I was, uh, I worked um, in the production, did like the lights, the tech, oh, the audio. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it kind of saved me from some late nights on Saturday too, you know, like, Oh, I got to be at church at five 30 in the morning to set everything up, you know, yeah. you know, besides the point, but yeah, that faith has always just been something I've, I've kind of fallen back on in, in tough times, um, surrounded myself with people that can encourage me in that way too. Um, you know, I think you should find people that have the same beliefs as you. So when you do go and ask them for advice, um, you know, they're going to, Maybe not. They'll hopefully they'll not tell you what you want to hear, and mm-hmm. they'll tell you what you need to hear. Um, but it's not completely wrong advice, you know. Uh, you know, how do I get in shape? Well, you probably should sit on your couch and stuff your face with donuts. Yeah. It's like, well, that's wrong. I know that's <laughs> not right. I need to do something besides that. Um, and so yeah, just just being around people in church, my parents, um, and then now, kind of as I got into F three, I mean, it's just an extension of that. Um, Urkel, you know a man of God, uh, believes in, believes in Jesus with his whole heart, looking for any opportunity to share that with people too. Uh, you know, really good dude. Uh, and so just to be able to have that opportunity in F3 to tell, uh, other people about my faith has been fun, uh, and it's been an awesome opportunity. Um, and I think, I think too, just there's guys in F3, there's, there's a crazy mix of people who believe and what I believe people and huge, huge group that also doesn't believe what I believe, you know, mm-hmm. faith wise, not faith wise. And so, uh, just fun to hear different stories. I mean, you don't want to be in an echo chamber. And so 
being being uh, where I'm at now, trying to lead my my house, my family, um, and having guys in F3 uh, to to lean on, just people in my life. Uh, it's I mean, it'll always be a huge part of of who I am and, and what I do is is uh, is what Jesus has for my life. So. Yeah, man, I love that. I think it's so cool because I think. You know, just you and assuming you and your wife share the same belief system, right? And so, so just the how far ahead you already are, right? From like maybe a couple that doesn't have the same beliefs, right? Because then you get to have kids, you get to raise them in a certain way. And I think just, um, you know, again, I'll, I'll go back to all the time that that most people are wasting in in their sort of college and early twenties that is just a, it's just this carryover of like adolescence that guys for whatever reason, I feel like just struggle to move on. Right. Like, like, you know, but you've, yeah. you've done that so well. And so just really, yeah. really impressive, man. Just really appreciate yeah. Thank you. you and who you are. You know, I'm, I'm curious as you think about like you, so you're 22, right? So you're young. Have you, have you gone through, do you feel like you've experienced some things in, in life that have, sort of made you more confident or given you sort of this, like, yeah, this is how I know that this is like, this is the thing, right? Like, I, cause that's where my, where my mind is like, okay, well, baby shoes. Why do I believe? Yeah. Well, like baby shoes is doing great. He's got a great faith. And I share, I believe the same thing you do, but I believe that cause like God has proven himself to me <laughs> in a, yeah, few, in a yeah. few ways, but I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. Do you feel like you have that or maybe that's something you'll, I mean, we, we'll all get that as life goes. Totally, on. yeah, yeah. Kind of the tests and the trials I've I've been through in life. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, nothing crazy. I mean, I think of, and I I hate to tell other people's stories, but my dad, a uh, year and a half ago, a year and you know nine months ago, uh, almost died. Um, he was having some pain in the middle of the night in his chest uh and he thought it was just maybe some heartburn after like an hour of moaning and groaning and shouting in the house he's like all right kale like we're going to the hospital so mm -hmm. you know sped down got him over to methodist and um and just the the times that i see uh the, the, that time I saw God's just hand on the whole situation. Uh, and after that, I mean, he's made a full recovery. Uh, so I should back up. What he had was an aortic aneurysm. So to, to tell, you, tell you that, uh, 50% of people who have one die. Yeah. And then 50%, the other 50% that survive, or I should back up people that make it to the table then for the operation, only a third of them actually make it out of the operation and live. Um, so whatever percentage of that is, my dad made that, um, you know, uh, through, through that time, uh, and, and the doctor that operated on him was like, you were an hour away from dying. Uh, you know, and when we were in the ER, there was one person, uh, servicing all of Omaha that night for x-rays, you know, so they got their x-ray, but the x-ray tech that was, or the, uh, the doctor that actually looks at the x-ray one person that night wow. assigned and the the er doctor had the knowledge to say or not the knowledge but the um i don't know just just took the initiative to kind of glance at it and she's like hey you need to move this up in the queue and told that doctor and they go yep surgery now like his heart's you know his chest is filled with blood or whatever i mean just these different things that like I mean, if God wanted to bring him home that night, he would have, mm -hmm. um, and my dad wouldn't be with us, but he did, uh, he didn't, he didn't bring him, God didn't bring him, he gave him, he's given him another year and nine months mm -hmm. since that, since that happened. Um, and it's it just, yeah, I mean, that's a story where like my dad in it too, when he's come out of it, his attitude towards that surgery that he had, the road for recovery. He's not had like just this negative attitude. He's just been so open and honest. Like I mean, he's probably struggled that he hasn't shared everything with me. But and the, more in the aspect of what he has shared is just like God. Like how are you going to use this? Like not why me, but just why in general. Like mm -hmm. what 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 do you want me to learn out of this? What is coming out of this? Like you know you know you have me here for a reason. You had me suffer through that for a reason. That one I mean real recently just stuff like that. Um, 
and you see God's hand in, I mean, I was, I had to take him there that night. I mean, it was just crazy, crazy night. Oh. Um, you know, and he's just made a full recovery now. I mean, just crazy that no, he's just blessed. I mean, God had his hand on the whole thing. Like I said, love it. I mean, there's stories like that. Um, you know, uh, just, yeah, just, I can't, I mean, nothing crazy for me. I can't think yeah. of, I mean, other than like immediate family. Um, I mean, I think of just like, just having a rock solid foundation. I mean, like to your point, I, I didn't go live the typical college life to share the stories and, and look back and, and never grow out of it. I mean, I have people that I know that are 30 ish age that are just can't like, Oh, like, okay. Back in college, like this happened. And, and when I was in my twenties, this happened. And like, they just want to tell all those stories and they're just trying to relive that because they felt like it was a feeling that fulfilled them at the time. And yeah. now they're like, oh, let's go party every weekend. And, Let's get drunk and share, keep sharing these stories and living in the past. And, <laughs> I mean, I just didn't have that. I, I mean, I, I like besides the one with, with my dad's and there's a couple other ones that I won't share, but with immediate family and um, I mean, I'll share them per personally if somebody wants to come ask me. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just seeing where God has had his hand on other people's lives that have interconnected to mine people that God has put in my life. I mean, all this is just like, I wouldn't believe what I believe now um, without, you know, the things that God has done. I don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, no, it's great. And, and, you know, I think the way at least God has worked in my life is he, he's always, you know, revealing himself to us in different ways based on circumstances and people. And, you know, so I think it's just cool that, you know, you have this opportunity now to view whatever comes next as like, okay, just like watching your dad, right? Like not, not like why me, but like, okay, what's, what are you going to do with this situation, God? And, and I think that's, that's really cool. That's how I'm, I'm getting to that point, but it, um, I had to go through some stuff because of bad decisions that I made and you hopefully, you know, so I'm just, I think it's cool to just hear your perspective on that. Um, you appreciate you just sharing too. I think it, you know, to be, um, just courageous and bold and sharing your faith is uh, super special. That's how we all learn. So I, I love that you're mm -hmm. willing to do that. The other question, kind of the area that we like to get your thoughts on is leadership and, and would just love to hear about uh, your time as a site queue and um, yeah. would also love, you know, just talk us through kind of the succession planning and how all of that uh, worked out as well. Yeah. Um, Oh, man, leadership. Uh, I love it. I love the that F3 gives you a chance to lead at so many different levels. Um, at just leading beatdowns, at leading a site, a um, few, few, a few less positions, but at, up, up top of kind of what you do. Um, some of our first F, FQs, second FQs, third FQs, you know, Hater Todd at the very top here in Omaha. Um, though the, op, yeah, just the amount of time, opportunity the amount of opportunity for guys to lead is just so vast um whether you just want to dip your toe in the water is just so awesome uh and so having the opportunity to lead it, just a beat down on my vq was awesome i think back on trying to lead that and having a vision you know at least i overcomplicated mine i've heard that's kind of a thing guys do when they're on their vq they overcomplicate it a little bit i know i did um but just to one yell at a bunch of guys and have them all listen to you is kind of fun mm -hmm. um and not in a bad way but just you know hey we're doing this now we're doing that we're doing this yeah. um and, and guys are willing to listen and and help you when you fall too or you know give you correction when you need it um so positively that i just think of like other things in my life uh you know leading at work um you know i'm not in a manager position you have to lead through meetings you have to uh you know lead lead sometimes uh just the people around you um your, your boss you know hey you know, i think we should probably take this direction and try to lead whatever projects mm -hmm. um i i coach trying to lead lead that team i mean i'm not the head coach but there's times where my coach says hey can you can you take uh take this workout or take this group and lead them through this this workout you know we're all doing the same workout but i just need you to manage these you know four because they have a little bit different workout whatever it is mm -hmm. um you know they don't just have that immediate like I'm, i trust you you know to lead us not everyone has that and in, in f3 people are like 
okay, yeah, I, I trust you, like lead us through this workout and they're gonna listen to what you say. And so that has been super cool to then jump into the uh, site queue with Urkel at main stage. Uh, Rowdy and Bayside asked us super early on. Um, it was like in November. They took it. They took it in August, and they asked us in November, <laughs> like, "Hey, do you you guys want to be like, well, like, sure?" And so took it. Um, and then we we took it that following August or that next year in August. You know, had it for the year. Just passed it here recently. Um, and and in that leading, um, it's it's definitely different. Um, we're to have the opportunity to uh, rally guys and create a culture uh, at your site. Um, I love how every guy can kind of take his spin or if it's a couple guys that are leading a site, take their spin on how they want to try to lead a site. Um, it's super fun because uh, I know Sister Act, uh, when he started the site, uh, he was just all about um, led in a rotating fashion. Mm -hmm. Every guy has his chance to lead, uh, come up on the stage and, you know, lead, lead the group, have his time to shine, uh, in the spotlight. And that was, was his kind of year goal for, uh, the main stage. Um, Rowdy and Bayside just wanted to cult uh, create a culture that kind of cultivated just guys showing up every week, uh, and like picking up the six, uh, fellowship, not that sister act didn't want that, but, mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit different. I mean, they were looking for guys that would bring, bring 20 to 30 to kind of create something a little bit more casual. You know, if we can always have maybe some guys that are going to bring, you know, VQs, uh, you know, guys who are just maybe going to do a fun beat down like soccer or something, getting the lights on up at main stage every week. So it can maybe bring like, you know, 15 to 25 guys every week. Um, or it's almost that middle ground where you can get lost in the crowd mm -hmm. uh, if you're new. And, but I think some guys needed that. I think of some of the new guys that came in, and they weren't lost because uh, Rowdy and Bayside made an effort to pick up the six to uh, be there for the new guys, the FNGs uh, every week. But they were uh, just had a different you know way they wanted to do it. And so me and Urkel took it over. Uh, our goal was just to get guys who were there every week. Um, we didn't find as many VQs. I mean, you know, it seemed, and that's okay. I mean, we got some guys who who were coming every week to the site, and those were the guys we wanted to to lead the site um, and, and and lead the beatdowns, I should say, not lead the site, but lead the beatdowns week to week for the guys who were coming every week. Um, you know, I think home runs VQ, he was coming every week uh, to main stage. And so we're like, dude, like this is, this is a site you're attending a bunch and we want to, you know, have you the opportunity to give you the opportunity to lead, lead that. And so just the leadership aspect is, is, is so much fun. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've just grown so much, so I can't, awesome. I can't speak poorly on it. I don't know any guy that could, uh, in F3, but it's just been, it's been a blast to, to lead and, uh, and yeah, give the opportunity to other guys to lead to week to week. So. Heck yeah. And you're going to stay on as our like West sector data and tech yeah. guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever that means. I mean, we know, I know we're working out the details on that, but yeah, just to be involved. I mean, the contract, you know, guys, the contract and the, the salary uh, proposals in, in the mail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to uh, think about how some guys and there's nothing wrong with it, but they get done with a week, uh, a year of being a psych or however long it was. And they want to kind of step back and, and, uh, take a break and which is totally okay. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot to be there every week. Um, and, uh, I, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't find myself, uh, able to do that. I'm like, okay, like what's next? Like where, what yeah. can I lead next? Like, what, what can I do now? Like, how can I still be involved? Cause I'm not, I don't want the, I don't even want to have the chance if I'm committed. I mean, that was the great part about being a psych is if I'm committed every week to be there, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I have to be there. I have to, I have to do the work down. So when I'm staying in shape of fitness, I get to hang out with Urkel and all the other guys there, build the fellowship, you know, uh, hang out with guys, uh, and then just, you know, be pushed sometimes spiritually, sometimes not, you know, but the fellowship was there. Uh, and so, yeah, like now that I'm not a psych, you, I have no, I have no responsibility to show up to a down <laughs> at any time. I can well, do whatever I want. Yeah. We, well, let's get and you. That, and that's okay. I mean, we'll there's get you another guys, flag here one of these days. Yeah. yeah who need that, who don't, who don't need to be committed every week and, and they need a little bit more flexible schedules because work, life, whatever it is. 
Um, but yeah, I'm like, if I'm, if I'm accountable for something, you know, it's not like I can just walk away from this. So, yeah. uh, that's where I'm like, give me more, give me more. That's the <laughs> intent. For sure. We'll, f- we'll find more, more work for you to do. Well, I, I do just want to thank you for your role as a psych you also with the data stuff. I mean, I think it's super important and we use that right when we're trying to do expansion or starfish and mm-hmm. it never fails. Right. Somebody's like, well, we need a new site here. And it's like, well, the, the numbers don't really suggest that. And that, I mean, I, you just, in my opinion, you have better conversations when you have some data to sort of guide reality. Right. I mean, I think you totally. can, you can go to a site at the shovel pass and you have 50, 60 guys there that feels like it needs star fishing. But if you look at the, the trend, it just, you know, it doesn't always match up. So it, that's been super mm-hmm. helpful. Um, I do want to get, you know, just kind of, as you think about life where you're at, um, kind of one of the questions we, we like to, to wrap up with is just where do you need prayers and encouragement today? Like if we see out there or if, if we're thinking about you, we text you, we want to check in on something. What's on that list for you that, that would be helpful? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Oh man, probably just my family. Me and my wife is, is the family right now. Uh, and only in the aspect of, uh, I mean, it's not like we're going through anything crazy, but there's just always ups and downs in marriages. Uh, and, um, and, and sometimes it is, it is hard, uh, plans change for it, um, of what you want to do. I should say plans change for what you want to do because you're married. Um, and so I think, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like not always, but you know, I feel like when me and my wife aren't fighting, then I'm like, we're doing something wrong. And not that we should always be fighting, but yeah. only in, only in the aspect of, um, you know, we're two different people trying to figure out life and, and do life together. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, you know, we're not willing to die on, our, on some hills, uh, then, you know, we're, stop, we're not caring you know, yeah. about something. And, and maybe it's a, some, a topic not to care about, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, just... Uh, prayers for for my marriage um i'm always always happy to um to hear that guys are are rooting for for other other guys' marriages um with living in a world where 50 percent of marriages end in divorce um and i mean i'm gonna take every guy in my corner that's that's praying that's fighting for me and my wife uh i mean i'll i'll take every single one of you so Absolutely. Well, I love it, man. Just appreciate you and your story and, and who you are. It's been great. Uh, I know I've enjoyed getting to know you and, and yeah, just looking forward to, to the future. Uh, I feel like you guys are going to have a, you'll have a baby in the next year or two is my, is my guess. But. We'll see. My wife wants to go back to school and be a uh, physician's assistant. So uh, you, she can do well, that when she's yeah, pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Let's do a little name around here. Uh, Brandon yeah. Flaherty, 38, the plague. The plague. Oh. And Kel Jones, 22, baby shoes. Baby shoes. Hate, right? And you hold, normally you hold up your shoe, which I... I do. Yeah. I, I have some chains now. I have some Crocs on, on a chain. Yeah. I like to try to pull out at the end of the... Yeah. That's awesome. I love it, man. Thanks for your time today. Have a good rest yeah. of your day. Thank you.